to the second half. So Robert Gunn the third, the true freshman kicker who was benched last week in favor of Jonathan White kicking off. It'll be a touchback and Syracuse will start on its 25 yard line. Checking now with the third member of our crew. Here's Tom Luganville. Well, Dusty, those critical mistakes you talked about with Clemson can be summed up in one word. Those are turnovers, and the numbers are staggering. You look at all of last season, 2022, 14 games, 22 turnovers, 35 points. But you look at the first four weeks of Clemson's season here, seven turnovers, 36 points off of those turnovers. And not all turnovers are created equal, guys. A strap sit, strip sack fumble goes for points instead of getting recovered. That's a huge momentum shift, and that's what Clemson's been dealing with. All right, Tom, and on first down, Syracuse going to run the ball, and Quint Allen able to get the edge. And stepping out of bounds after a gain of a handful. Allen, a sophomore from New Jersey, who's already got six rushing touchdowns in the season, good for eighth in the country, replacing Sean Tucker. He was the backup to Tucker a year ago. A second down and four on the 31-yard line. This time a Schrader keeping it, and he's dumped close to the line to gain by Jeremiah Trotter. Schrader also has six rushing touchdowns, so Allen and Schrader, the top tandem right now in college football in total rushing touchdowns. It's a heavy RPO offense, a lot of read action from the quarterback, and Garrett Schrader, a more than capable runner with the football. He's got a big body, 6'4", 225 plus, tough to tackle. It's going to be a huge factor throughout the course of this game. And Dusty for here on third and short yardage they bring in a defensive Snake. lineman Elijah Wright and he's going to come in and shove Schrader and get him across the 35 yard line for a first down so tough to defend the quarterback sneak when you put a big body player behind the quarterback give that extra push that extra shove and Garrett Schrader needed it to move the sticks to get the first down Schrader, a transfer from Mississippi State. Had an excellent year last year until he got hurt. That was part of the reason why the losing streak ended for Syracuse. The winning streak ended, rather. Schrader taking off here, making defenders miss, spinning away from defenders before he gets planted and loses the ball. Justin Maskell absolutely hammered Schrader, and he coughed it up and turned it over. There is a penalty marker down as well. Great run, but he got absolutely pasted by Maskell. And the Tigers recovered at the 45-yard line. Peyton Page, defensive tackle, good effort to the ball. He comes up with the football, but again, let's see what the penalty marker is about. Dabo Sweeney. Not happy with the officials. The rolling on the field is a fumble recovered by the defense. Personal foul, targeting with the crowd of the helmet. Defense. And now Justin Maskell, a starting defensive lineman, is gone for the rest of the game. Here's the hit. Replay has overturned the ruling on the field of targeting. So not only is this not a 15-yard penalty for the hit by Justin Maskell, but it's a turnover, and it's Clemson ball on its 45. And on first down, Kate Klubnik to the air, has all day to throw, hits his tight end, Brinning Stool, who's out to midfield for a pickup of five yards. They try to target him more often. He had three catches last week after just seven through the first three games and already won here on the first play. Huge frame, and it could be a potential real weapon for this Clemson offense. Club Nick to throw again, and that pass is nearly picked off. Elijah Clark stepping in front of that pass intended for Tyler Brown. He might have been able to take that back, and he secured the ball. Boy, Elijah Clark, such a good player. How about him read this route? I almost picks it off and takes it the other way. Great anticipation and understanding of what's coming in that spot. Lubnick has not thrown an interception in the last couple games, although he did have that turnover last week. 
95% of it wasn't his fault as it was recovered and returned for a touchdown by Florida State. Syracuse showing pressure. Klubnik on third down, throws a deep ball, single coverage, got a man and complete. Knocked away at the last second by Jeremiah Wilson and a late flag is thrown. Adam Randall was the intended target. This will be pass interference on Syracuse and a first down for Clemson. Adam Randall had a step on Jeremiah Wilson and he grabs with the left hand. Pass interference. Number 14, defense. 15-yard penalty and an automatic first down. Gets a grab with the left hand right as the ball is being delivered. He rakes over with the right arm. It's the right call. If he got a little bit nervous, panicky, Randall got behind him. The grab with the left and the rake with the right before the ball gets there. So that puts the ball at the 35 of Syracuse. Klubnik throwing it on all three downs to start the game, and now they run it. Will Shipley has some room inside the 25, a first down. Actually, going to say his knee hit the ground. Looks like just shy as he bounced off the turf at the 26. Shipley closing it on 300 yards already this season. He had a buck 72 against Syracuse and a come-from-behind win at Clemson a year ago. He's got a great combination of speed, power, and contact balance. Runs with a purpose and a nice pickup on first down. Shipley again easily getting the first down and breaking tackles. Finally brought down inside the 20 by Justin Barron. Another good run there. Gain of about eight. Really good on the perimeter blocking Tyler Brown, the true freshman who Antonio Williams out here in this game once again for Clemson. You're going to see Tyler Brown's roll pick up for this offense and a nice job on the perimeter for the good block. Ankle injury for Antonio Williams. It's in the backfield here. Now they shift Tyler Brown back to a bunch formation. Clemson has been miserable in the red zone this season. We'll see how they do here on first down. In trouble, Clemson being chased, throwing on the run complete to the 15-yard line as Stellato gets dumped there. Bulls award winner for the job he did at TCU last year. It's been a struggle, though, for him. They try to run between the tackles, and Shipley is bottled up. Gain of one. Kavon Darton, a, a nose tackle that's listed at 5'11", 270. Former walk-on. He was in there along with Terry Lockett on the stop. Plays with great leverage. Obviously not much height, but tough to move against the run there inside. Big third down here early for this Orange defense. Rocky Long, the defensive coordinator, loves to dial up pressure. We'll see if he comes after Klubnik. On third and seven, Klubnik in trouble, gets away on the run, throwing into the end zone. first touchdown. Clemson on the board early on. Well, Rocky Long dialed up the blitz. Isaiah Johnson off the corner. He loses contain. Excellent by Kate Clemson keeping his eyes down the field and a stilato running a deep cross wide open in the end zone and a big touchdown and third down conversion for this Tiger offense. Remember, Kate Klubnik, as Whites, comes on for the point after. He's a new starter. He started just one game last year. He struggled early on, but it seems like he's starting to get into a groove. He saw the pressure that time. He didn't see it last week on that big hit that led to a fumble recovery touchdown for Florida State. And Whites, who had that miss on that short field goal late last week, good and tough to get back to the ACC championship game. They've won seven of the last eight titles under Dabo Sweeney. Two years ago, two and two start, but one of those losses was out of conference. They end up winning 10 games that year. And a great start for Clemson. They force a turnover, and then something they haven't done, they score in the red zone. And on third and long, 
to be a touchback here again. Syracuse will start at the 25 and say hello to Kevin Agondi. Good afternoon, Dave. 10 a.m. local kick. And number eight, USC is awake in Boulder less than three minutes in, Bob. Yeah, maybe Colorado's not awake. They have the running back him, Kevin, and he reverses field, and there's no pursuit by this Buffalo defense. Ooh, Marshawn Lloyd, 27 yards, and it's USC over Colorado, 7 nothing early. Dave Dusty Lugs, back to you. It's going to be really interesting to see how Colorado responds today after getting bludgeoned last week in Eugene. Obviously, that score, 42-6, could have been much worse. Here's Schrader in trouble. Set. And, boy, this guy, T.J. Parker, true freshman, has been phenomenal this season for Clemson. That's his second sack of the year. Boy, T.J. Parker just plays this so well. Stays square, stays at balance. Also, mask on the backside with the pressure. And down goes Garrett Schrader, the true freshman, so productive this year. And does that those when he told us he might be the best true freshman defensive end edge that we've had? And that's quite the statement. So productive early on this year. After the loss of seven, Schrader in trouble again. Sacked again. So a Clemson team that had six sacks in the first four games has two already in this game, and it's T.J. Parker back there again. And Tyler Davis. Tyler Davis is a speed rush. Watch the hands. Hear it from Tyler Davis. And then it's also T.J. Parker. Excellent job just getting separation, getting the rip up. Parker from the outside, Davis from the inside. Not a place Syracuse wants to be here third and long. Four-yard loss, third and 21. They're just going to keep it on the ground here. Out to about the 20-yard line is Allen. Boy, Dabo Sweeney told us in our conversation this week, they're angry yes. about how the season has gone so far. They look angry. They're playing that way so far. Takeaway to start the game and now a force punch. Big vicious hit takeaway. Playing with a purpose here early on. And this Clemson defense, look, they're number eight in the country coming in at yards against. They played well throughout the course of the season. As Dabo Sweeney told us, the metrics they check, this is one of the better teams he's had to this point, though the two and two record doesn't indicate it. Stonehouse to punt for Syracuse. Tyler Brown, the true freshman, under it. Punt. And they're going to throw a flag on Syracuse here. It's going to be on Elijah Clark for coming in and not allowing the return man the opportunity to bring in the football. It's going to be a penalty that will put the ball near midfield. Can't catch interference. Kicking team, number five. 15-yard penalty, first down. Boy, the mistakes continue here early on for Syracuse. Elijah Clark, he's flying down the field. He's got to shut it down and allow the return man the opportunity to catch that ball. Another big punitive mistake here for the Orange. And Kate Klubnik with his 10th touchdown pass of the season. On the last drive, the sophomore from Austin, Texas, he told us when we talked to him earlier this season that he's more of a vocal leader this year, and that leadership, that's been challenged. You, you've got to be in a situation here where you are trying to keep your guys focused and positive. He's done a good job of that this week, according to the coaches. Lundin's pass here is caught by Stilato, and the touchdown grab earlier, wrestled to the ground at the 43 by Jeremiah Wilson, a pickup of seven. Boy, Stilato hurt last season, hurt all three camp and he's really stepped up and emerged top. He could be a real key for this wide receiver group. He's so sure-handed and on that touchdown he did such a great job of working himself to get open and making him available. I think he's a bit of a safety blanket for Cade Plutnick. They've just been waiting for him to get healthy. Return right before that Monday night opener against Duke after the knee injury a year ago. Play action here. Plutnick setting up, looking deep, taking a shot, overthrown and incomplete. He's going for Bo Collins, who stopped his route. Jason Simmons had the best chance of catching up to it, the safety for Syracuse. And now it's third down and three. Big third down, playbook's wide open. Big Phil Maffa in the backfield. Didn't surprise me at all if we see if the numbers dictate just handing it to Phil Maffa. Get Kate Klubnick out of the perimeter, the run pass option. Maybe four down territory. And it is going to be Mappa. And he's cut down for a loss and two by Justin Barrett. Now it's fourth and five. And let's 
see if Clemson punts now. They will. Boy, Justin Barron, so versatile, got great link, and a sure tackler. Watch him work his way down here and make an excellent play on third down. It's just one-on-one. -on -one. It's Phil Malfa and Justin Barron. He doesn't make that tackle to first down. Goes for the legs on the 230-pound back and gets him to the ground. Justin Barron plays a very important position in that rocky long defense, a position that Brian Urlacher played back in the day for Rocky Long and obviously was a phenomenal NFL player as that is pulled into the eight-yard line by Adams. And there's the flag for kick-catch interference on Clemson. But instead of being pinned inside the 10, Syracuse going to have the ball across the 20. But that rover position is kind of reversed in Rocky Long's defense yeah. right from when Urlacher, your former teammate with the Bears, played it. Yeah, we were talking with Coach Long yesterday. He's just a legend and a mastermind of defense. Kick catch interference. Kicking team, number 45. 15-yard penalty. First down. One of the architects of this 3-3-5 defense. And that rover position started with Urlacher. We're seeing it here today with Barron. 7-0 clips in Urlacher. Competing to be the Taco Bell Live My Student section of the year. Download the Taco Bell app to learn more. First time they've done this in Syracuse. Otto's Army, the student-run organization, camped out overnight before tonight's game. As the ball's on the ground and it's scooped up at the 25-yard line by Xavier Thomas inside the 10. And Thomas out of bounds inside the five-yard line. What an awful start for Syracuse. Two turnovers. And pass. And Recovered minutes. in advance by the defense. First down, Clemson. Well, this could not have been a worse start for the Syracuse offense. Second fumble already in the first quarter. This toss is high. Up and behind him. Still, you think LaQuinn Allen can get his hands on it, can possess it. He does it on the ground. And Xavier Thomas, the senior, finally healthy, playing great. A scoop and almost a score. Bad pitch there by Garrett Schrader, Tom. That was way off. Behind him, up high. Tough play for LaQuinn Allen to be able to make. Yeah, you got to be able to lead him forward and let him run under the ball, through the ball, and get his shoulder square to the line of scrimmage. And moreover, the amount of white, unblocked jerseys around that football when it went on the ground. Syracuse is going to have to come up with some answers for this front. So it's first and goal on the three. Clemson looking to go up two scores early on. I feel like Will Shipley coming here. Shipley lunging forward and grabbed and pushed back at the one. So a gain of two. Austin Rune on the stop. So the team that was among the best in turnover ratio has been horrific so far to start this game. But the lost fumble, although hard to blame Schrader, was a great hit by Clemson. But the last one, especially where it happened, at the 25-yard line. And then Thomas also almost taking it back to the house. That's second and goal on the two. Can Syracuse get a win and hold Clemson to just three points here? his second rushing touchdown and fourth overall this season and Clemson out to a 13 nothing lead cashing in once again off the turnover just power football I'm gonna say our guys are bigger and better up front than yours and lean on your talented running back it's a good physical run by Will Shipley as Jeremiah Wilson meets him right at the goal line lowers the shoulder and rolls into the end zone so Clemson has had three offensive possessions so far. They started the first one on their 45, the second one in midfield, and that last drive on the Syracuse three. It's 14-0 Clemson. Well, Dabo's message to his team and the leaderships of that Clemson team really showing here with a great opening 10 minutes on the road. Coming up on ABC and the ESPN app following our game, we'll head to Austin, third-ranked Texas. Could the Longhorns be the best team in the country? They look like it right now. They got Kansas. Should be a really good game. And tonight, you got Notre Dame and Duke. 
College game day, of course, was in Durham for the first time earlier today. Can number 17 Duke knock off another ranked team? They beat number nine Clemson to start the year. Two great matchups today on ABC following this one. Oh, and Kansas offense has the ball with Jalen Daniels, Devin Neal, Daniel Highshaw. Lance Leipold's offense gets that Texas defense. It's going to be great. Can Kansas get stops against Quinn Ewers in that offense? That's going to be the real question if it's competitive in Austin this afternoon. So another touchback, it will come out to the 25. Now let's go to Kevin Agandhi in the studio. Dave, time now for our All State Good Hands Play of the Day over on ESPN. Undefeated Kentucky hosting number 22, Florida. Graham Mercy can't do this. Yeah, really good job by Kentucky playing zone defense. Tim Brill, balls in the air. It gets picked, and then don't just fall down. Make something happen. Take the ball toward the end zone. Trevin Wallace gets it inside the red zone, and that would set up Ray Davis going in for the score off the screen. And it, right now, Kentucky, they got Georgia next. They're up 10 0 at home. Back to you. And meanwhile, another good defensive play as LaQuint Allen is drilled right as he receives the football by Khalil Barnes, true freshman Nichols. So Syracuse having all kinds of trouble. They had a good drive to start the game, but the turnover during the live run by Schrader, and they have not been able to respond since. Now they go empty, shifting Allen out of the backfield. Schrader going to take off, and again, Vicious tackle at the 25-yard line by Peter Woods. Now they've tried to throw the ball some in this game, but Traders had to take off, so officially just one attempt throwing the ball. Nice job by Peter Woods. Such a talented true freshman working inside. And as Schrader tried, thought he saw a crease in the middle of that defensive line. Woods works back inside and shuts it off. Can they protect? It's going to be a real problem all day for this O line. So third down and 10. Schrader from the pocket. Tips it in there complete. And a first down. Pulled in by Donovan Brown. Redshirt freshman receiver. Now 16 grabs on the year. Gain of 12, and maybe that'll settle down. Garrett Schrader. It's really good pocket presence by Schrader. He's delivering that football, getting hit at the exact same time by Peter Woods. But he finds Donovan Brown for a crucial first down. Almost feels like they need to go down to score a touchdown. The way this game has started. At least flip field position and get yourself on a long field behind you for your defense. Trainer in trouble again. Hit as he throws. And it was nearly picked off on the redirection. It was behind Donovan Brown. And R.J. Mickens almost secured that ball. More pressure. This time it was Khalil Barnes that hit Trainer. Another true freshman. Khalil Barnes off the edge. Doesn't identify him. Boy, that ball so close right through the hands of R.J. Mickens. Pass behind the target. Syracuse lucky that didn't go the other way. Allen trying to pick a hole, getting outside at the 40, 45, into Clemson territory before he's knocked out of bounds at the 47-yard line. There is a penalty flag, though, in the backfield. This is coming back. Offense number 72, 10-yard penalty. It's on right tackle Mark Petrie. That's the reason why Allen was able to get the edge there. Xavier Thomas was in good position. Petrie got just enough to help secure that edge. See him working out here on the outside. A little bit of a jersey grab. You get outside the framework, Dave, makes it an easy call and a costly penalty negating a big first down. Turnovers, penalties. So far for Syracuse have been the story. Schrader, again with pressure, able to complete it, past the 40, a first down and more to the tight end, Dan Valari. All the way inside the 40, and Clemson down to the 36. It's a gain of 37 yards to Dan Valari. Boy, an excellent job locating the tight end out in the flats. And how about after the catch, the former quarterback who's added some weight, showing the athleticism, where they missed a Rondé Gatson who went down in that week two game against Western Michigan. Second play of the game, second game of the season. They lose their All-American, but a big play by that tight end. Here comes a double pass. Bellari throwing it down. He's got two guys there, and it's dropped at the 15-yard line by Donovan Brown. He had his choice, either Brown or for LaQuint Allen, Brown still had a chance to make the grab and could not. I mentioned the former quarterback. He's got a wide open Donovan Brown pass a little behind him, but you've got to find a way to catch that football. 
Timeout called here by Clemson. Syracuse with a little trickery, finally getting into Clemson territory. But a drop, another mistake by the 4 0 Orange, who trailed Army for a good part of that first half last week, but able to come back and win the game. Dave Pash, Dusty Dvorak, Tom Lugan, Bill inside the JMA Dome where Syracuse is playing its conference opener, has to go to North Carolina next week. They have lost five in a row against Clemson, the last win coming in 2017. The game at Clemson last year, Syracuse was leading 21 to seven, and at that point, the Orange was six and oh. Syracuse lost that game, ended up losing five in a row, six of their final seven to finish seven and six. And it was just the second winning season for Dino Babers. He won 10 games five years ago, but last year was only his second winning year in eight seasons on the job. Here's Allen finding some room inside the 30 and down to the 28. But Quinn Allen, who lost his father in February, he was murdered in a shooting incident just a couple of months after getting to see his son play at Yankee Stadium in the pinstripe ball, a game where LaQuinn Allen had 11 catches. He now wears on the back of his jersey, Junior, because his dad was LaQuinn Allen Sr. He'd always worn Allen on his nameplate, but changed it this year, adding the Junior to honor his late father. Got a tight end, Max Mang, in the backfield with Allen here. And short yardage, third down and two. Extra offensive lineman in as well. So heavy package, and they're going to throw it. Trader, open receiver. It's caught inside the 10. Millard, breaking tackle into the end zone. Touchdown, Syracuse. for Michigan. Syracuse football team had to have it. Let's go short yardage little play action. Here's Valari. He's just going to sneak out, and nobody's with him. And I love the job on the offensive line. The protection. Pocket is clean. He can step up, survey the field. Safeties get drawn in. Linebackers with the play action. And how about Valari? After the catch, making defenders miss, finding the end zone. And the Cuse back in this ballgame. You know, Jason Beck, the offensive coordinator, changing things up a little bit there. They put the extra offensive lineman in, along with the tight end of the backfield, and Schrader with his seventh touchdown pass. He's accounted down for 13 total touchdowns. He's a problem. He's a guy that doesn't get talked about a lot nationally, but a dual threat that is a real difficult assignment for defensive coordinators. He's got some real toughness to him, and he's become a much more confident thrower. Tom, that drive right there, big for this team, big for Garrett Schrader. Tells me two things. He's got a short memory to forget the bad things, and he's got competitive temperament. What mental toughness he showed on that drive. Here's the kickoff by Denneberg, and Shipley will let it go into the end zone for a touchback. Kick off your Sunday with NFL Countdown at 8.30 a.m. Eastern on ESPN before Tua and the Dolphins turned out a lot of first-round picks. Clemson certainly more recently, but great history here as well with the Orange football program. Two backs. Love this set for Clemson. And it's going to be Mafa, the bigger of the two running backs on first down off left tackle. And it's a gain of three for Mafa. Three touchdowns already on the season rushing, tackled by Derek McDonald. They can throw and run out of these two back sets when you've got Moffa and Will Shipley. The lead block for one another. They both catch the football well out of the backfield. It's a tough personnel package that Garrett Riley uses. To your point, 22 combined catches between those two. 
Klubnik over the middle, and the catch is made for a first down by the true freshman Tyler Brown. We talked about him, him stepping up in the absence of the injured Antonio Williams. He moves the chains here. Tyler Brown, man, he has got excellent speed, plays strong. They're raving about him. We had the Duke-Clemson game. They're raving about him coming into the season, when, and especially with Antonio Williams out. They've needed him to step up, and he's done just that excellent concentration, catching that ball slightly behind him on his hip. 90 seconds remaining here in the opening quarter. A lot of action so far. Klubnik from the pocket. And a lot of contact downfield hand fighting on an overthrow between Randall and Isaiah Johnson, captain of that Syracuse defense transfer from Dartmouth. And out second down and 10. Isaiah Johnson, he's got that great length and frame. He's 6'3", 205 plus. And a quality addition to the Syracuse defense. And a big time artist has published work in the Detroit Art Museum. And as we said, a Dartmouth graduate. Syracuse, of course, on par with Dartmouth when it comes to academics. Of course, naturally. Wouldn't want to slight them in any way. Klubnik on second and ten. Over the middle. Cole Shipley gets split up, but hangs out of the ball. Big hit by Clark coming downhill. And it's a gain of eight. Third down and two coming up. You mentioned it coming downhill. That's the way Elijah Clark plays. Plays through ball carriers. Exactly what Rocky Long wants. Big third down here for the Syracuse defense. They got the hammer in there. Phil Maffa. Klubnik looking to the sideline to get the check. And the play clock is at seven. Crowd really getting into it. You see the Syracuse defenders calling for it. Klubnik snaps it with one of the play clock. Pressure off the edge. Klubnik escapes. And he's going to run here. And head out of bounds, getting the first down. Crossing midfield. Good decision by Klubnik. Gain of four. And Jason Simmons Jr., the free safety, had him in a bye. Didn't know, should I stay back and play coverage? Should I come up and force that? Kate Klubnik stared down his receiver, made the free safety respect down the field, and allowed Kate Klubnik enough to get a first down and move the sticks. A touchdown pass for Klubnik. Touchdown run for Shipley. Syracuse responds with a lengthy drive to get on the board, but it's 14 7 Tigers after one. We'll be back after these messages and a word from our ABC stations. Running the Syracuse basketball team, Brett Autry, excellent hire. We'll see how he does in his first year at the helm. So, Phil Maffa carry, but nothing there. Lost a yard on the play. Tackled by Justin Barron has been all over the field in this game so far. Marlo Wax in there as well, the captain of that linebacking court. We met with Wax yesterday. What an impressive young man he is. An excellent football player. We haven't seen him much as a blitzer today, but their best blitzer on defense for Rocky Long. Lubnick to the air. Pressure on. Pass incomplete. He was trying to hit Brandon Spector. It was off target. Now it's third and 11. That gets the crowd back on its feet. This is where Syracuse likes to dial up some exotic blitzes. Don't show you where it's coming from. Got that 3-3-5 three, three, defense. A lot of different bodies they can throw at you and bring pressure from different areas. See how Rocky Long tries to attack Kate Klubnik on a big third down. Shipley not back in the game since that hit. He does have his helmet on on the Clemson sideline. Klubnik, pocket breaking down, he's sacked. Okachukwu with the takedown back near the 40-yard line, and that forces a Clemson punt. Well, it's a two-man game. The nose is going to go first, and you're going to see the, the loop inside. How about the spin move? Coming back inside by Achukwu with an excellent rush, beating the guard, Marcus Tate, and a huge sack to get this Q's defense off the field. They were getting after the Clemson offensive line on that drive. Had a negative play on first down, pressure.
pressure on second down the sack on third and now poor punt but it does take a Clemson bounce and dangerous play that time by Demarcus Adams to try to scoop up the bouncing ball it does work out for the home team and Syracuse's offense back out there when we return. All right, Kevin Syracuse with some momentum now back within seven and Garrett Schrader going to work again that pass way off the mark. Dan Valari it seemed like he was the intended target every Syracuse drive has started at the 25 yard line of Syracuse or worse as you look at what Schrader did in the last drive as opposed to the start of the game. Well he bounced back he's been under a lot of pressure a lot of duress had the fumble in the initial drive a bad pitch that set up the second story he settled down and put together a great crucial drive to score a touchdown and cut it to seven. And you mentioned during the break, no targets yet to Damian Alford, their big receiver who had a great day last week with nine catches. And here's a shot down field, and it's incomplete. A lot of hand fighting down the sideline, both Yamari Hatcher and Andrew McCuba going for the football, so no flag, and it's third down and long. I'm a little surprised we didn't see a flag here, guys. I mean, McCuba, he was continuing to drift back. As we see Hatcher working back toward the ball, it knocks him over. A lot of pushing and shoving, but no flag drawn. Syracuse comes into this game sixth in the country in scoring, 4-0 on the season, but movement here by the Orange, another penalty. Already had two turnovers. Offense, number 89. Five-yard penalty, third down. It's on Dan Valari with the touchdown. Syracuse one of two schools in the top seven in both points scored and points allowed. Oklahoma the other. The game for the Sooners next week on ABC against Texas. Mentioned Damian Alford. He's up here in the stacked alignment. On third and 15, Schrader climbing the pocket. Over the middle is pulled in. But short of the first down by five yards. Donovan Brown knocked down by Woodaz and Carter, and so Syracuse will punt it. Shot working back to the football by Donovan Brown. Thought he could slip loose of a Clemson defender. Gave ground to try to find some open space and good open field tackling by Clemson to get their offensive ball back and get off the field. Just showed you that team speed, Dusty, for Clemson. Those were linebackers that tracked him down. They can roll, brother. They can absolutely roll on this Clemson defense. Talent and speed at all three levels. Stonehouse punt. This is high and deep. Racing backwards is Tyler Brown, and it's fair caught inside the 20-yard line. So a punt of about 55 yards. Played by giving up turnovers and it leading to opponents' points here in this game. The big hit by Maskell turns into an excellent play. Kate Klubnick sees the corner pressure off the edge, eyes down the field. Salata working to open space in the end zone. Then a bad pitch. Xavier Thomas all over it as he gets it inside the five yard line, and Will Shipley caps it off. It's like opposite day here based off the first four games of the season for Clemson. The points off turnovers have played them. It's been the, really the key to this football game early for them against Syracuse. Because other than that, they've got 63 yards of offense and only 17 rushing yards. Will Shipley back in the game here. Got 22 yards on five carries and a touchdown. He'll get the attempt here. Up to the 23-yard line. So a gain of five there for Shipley, brought down by Isaiah Johnson. Shipley had fumble, recovered by the offense. Second Ball was on the ground, but recovered by the offense. Shipley had that 50-yard touchdown run last year and the win over Syracuse that was the go-ahead score and a come-from-behind victory. Winning these seventh ACC crown in the last eight years. That's going to be awfully challenging this year, though, at 0-2 to start the season in league action. Club neck pump fake. Pass is knocked down at the line of scrimmage. Dennis Jaquez getting his hand up, and it'll be third down. With such a key as a defensive lineman, if you can't get to the quarterback, try to shut it down, see the eyes of the quarterback, get your hands up in the throwing lane. Well done by Jaquez shutting down the rush and knocking down the pass. For the third down here for this Q's defense. Dialing up pressure in these spots. We haven't heard the name of Leon Lowry. He's their best edge rusher. So 
Slutnik on third and six. His pass is juggled, but secured for a first down by Tyler Brown to the 32 and a gain of 10. Really good find by Kate Plutnik. Wide open, Tyler Brown. Nice pitch and catch for a first. His second catch of the day. 14th on the season. Good play at the point of attack. Kevin Jobin getting into the backfield and get a piece of the running back that time, Will Shipley. Jobin, he just took a swipe at Will Shipley's leg. He doesn't get a piece of that leg. Shipley had a lot of open space off the edge of that defense. Jabity, a sophomore from Buffalo, New York, played only one year of high school football, so still learning the game. Second down and nine. Here's Shipley again. Wrestled down after just a couple. Marlo Wax, who's got 31 career starts, is the center of that Syracuse defense. Bright young man, was great to talk to him for 10, 15 minutes yesterday. He said last year, we started to read our own press clippings, and we got to 6-0, and but we're taking every day seriously in 2023. What happened last year is not going to happen this year. We'll see. They're down seven. Early second quarter. Klubnik over the middle in traffic. Nice throw by Klubnik out to midfield for Bo Collins. A first down gain of 16. What big time throw. Three receiver stack the far side of the field. And it's a good route by Bo Collins. Dig route and a good find by Kate Klubnik. Fitting it in between the linebackers and safeties. Excellent throw and catch. So the numbers there for Klubnik so far going to the air again here. And slipping is Brown on the turf after he made the catch. Short game. Elijah Clark is right there defensively. I tell you, from the first game of the season, watching all of his film up until today, big strides made for Kate Klubnik. The natural leader. He's got the athleticism. Just think he's really improved his pocket presence, working his eyes to find the open target. We've seen several times here early in this ballgame. Terrific high school player, two-time National Offensive Player of the Year, two state championships. As we have a flag. It's on Trent Howard. And that, that had to be tough, Dusty, last year because everybody knew at some point Klubnik was going to be the yep. guy. And Clemson fans were all over DJ Uyunglele. Yet Klubnik said, out of respect for DJ and their friendship, he was very quiet, biding his time, waiting for his opportunity without forcing it. And now it's his show. And is being a leader just comes natural to this young man. He's taking complete ownership of this offense and this team. In trouble here, trying to spin and throw, and it's incomplete. In the backfield was Elijah Clark, so it'll be third down and long. It's his show, but again, it's a two and two start, an 0 and two in league play, and now all the momentum in Syracuse's favor. And third down and long coming up. Rocky Long continues to dial up pressure. Elijah Clark off the edge. That was a dangerous situation with Kate Klubnik turning his back to the defense. Really lucky he was able to secure that snap. That thing came back like a missile. So now third and 12. Going to reset the play clock here on the Clemson 48-yard line. Clemson still has, we talked about the 0-2 start, they still have to go to Miami. They still have to go to NC State. They also play out of conference, Notre Dame at home and at South Carolina. A lot of challenging matchups left on that schedule. Now, last year they won 11 games, but outside of the ACC, they were 3-3. Three and three. Right. 8 no in league play. Klubnik in trouble. Being chased by two Syracuse defenders. Just throws it away into the stands. And Clemson will have to punt it again. Marlo Wax and Okachukwu in the backfield. Oh, this is potentially... An awful mistake here by Syracuse. Flag down. Here's the call. Is over. Personal foul. Late hit out of bounds. Defense number two. 15-yard penalty and an automatic first down. 
cannot make mistakes like this if you're Syracuse and by a guy who knows better Marlo Wax the leader of this defense one of the biggest leaders on this football team you get a massive stop wow. boy that, that's but why even walk up to why, him and chest bump it? him I mean obviously Kate Klubnik sold it but like if you're Marlo Wax go, go talk to your teammates go talk to your defense go give your secondary credit no reason to bump Kate Klubnik and yeah he sold it costly mistake there don't do it but still a bad call there wasn't yeah. much there no, here comes wasn't. a reverse to Adam Randall and Randall's got speed and room inside the 20. check that Tyler Brown the ball carrier inside the 15 yard line down to the 12. gain of 24. first action Tyler Brown utilizing that speed nice job by Will Shipley getting out in front little convoy as Clemson cashes in after the costly third and 12 personal foul. Play 11 of this drive coming up here. Moffa and Shipley in the backfield again. Clemson now in the red zone again. Moffa breaking tackles and finally knocked down at the nine by Barron. Otherwise, Moffa probably is in the end zone. Clemson had the red zone touchdown early on. 126 in the country and scoring percentage inside the 20 coming into today. See what they've done so far. Two possessions, two touchdowns, and looking for another one here. Second and five on the Syracuse nine. Lubnick pulls it down. The pass high, but caught by Brown. And he's upended at the five-yard line, short of the first down. Barron, another big hit. It'll be third and a yard at the Syracuse five. Where Tyler Brown is the go-to guy here today for this Clemson offense. Just a wide receiver screen set up very well. The offensive linemen get out in front. Now imagine Will Shipley, power football. Work out of the pistol here with Plumnik. Shipley, no, stood up. Maybe even lost a yard. Braylon Ingram was in there first for Syracuse. You would imagine Clemson would go for it, especially with the kicking issues with Jonathan Whites last week missing a 29 yarder and the offense will stay on the field here for fourth down and it's fourth and two because that did lose a yard. This could be an absolutely massive hold for the Syracuse defense. The question coming into today, could this undersized defensive line hold up against the rushing attack? And they might put to the test here. And Dusty might call a timeout yeah. here to talk through it. Play 14 of the drive coming up. And we'll talk it over with Timeout, Clemson, and Dabo Sweeney. They're second of the half. Welcome back to ESPN's Afternoon College Football on ABC, presented by Gillette Labs. Dave Pash, Dustin Dvorak, Tom Luganville down on the field. Clemson three of eight on the season on fourth down. This is fourth and two, going for it on the Syracuse five-yard line. Again, they have issues with their kicking situation that could be playing a role here in this decision. Jake Brinningstool is an excellent red zone target. Klumnik to throw back. I mentioned him earlier, Leon Lowry, the best edge rusher they have. And man, did he show up in a timely spot. Play action pass, good coverage in the end zone. Nobody's open. And Lowry, the good dip rip, working on the best offensive lineman, Blake Miller. And he gets to the quarterback, Kate Klubnik, and he gets him down. Big stop by their orange D. And so Syracuse takes over at the 12-yard line. Schrader to the air, to the sideline, all for Jones almost picked off on the redirection but an incomplete pass the first time they targeted big six foot six Damien Alford is wide open Alford 
catches that football, and Mickens just knocks it loose. You got to pick that thing clean, put it away. Should have been an easy pitch and catch. Second drop already by Syracuse wide receivers. At nine of his 17 catches last week, they run it here. Allen put his hand on the ground. Nice run. Out past the 15, out to the 17. You think of all the great running backs they've had over the years here. And LaQuinn Allen, just a sophomore, has a very bright future. Sean Tucker a year ago, I love what I see from LaQuinn Allen. The vision, patience, and then burst through the hole. Catches the ball very well out of the backfield. Had a great start to this season for the Syracuse offense. Saw Allen there, just about five yards of carry. So third down and five, Syracuse trying to keep possession here and not punt it right back to Clemson after the stop on fourth down. Schrader, design quarterback run, finds a hole. And Schrader, excellent athlete, gets the first down, takes another shot at the 30-yard line, but hung on to it this time to move the chain. Just smart running here by Garrett Schrader. Xavier Thomas comes inside, gives up the edge. Schrader sees it, changes his, his course of running, gets to the perimeter, and gets a big first down. Dusty, he kind of got lost behind the line of scrimmage. I think that's how Clemson got themselves a bit out of position, keeping their eyes inside. He squirts out to the outside. Such an imposing runner. It was Xavier Thomas. He's got to keep and hold that edge. He came inside. Yep. Schrader made him pay. Schrader dumping it off to Allen out of the backfield. Makes a couple of guys miss. And out to the 37 for about eight yards. Now, Garrett Schrader is just one of two FBS quarterbacks, Jaden Daniels the other, to have over 6,000 career passing yards and 2,000 career rushing yards. A true dual threat. And starting to get into rhythm now. Six of 10, 95 yards and a touchdown. And that pass overthrown, but a flag offered. Grabbed by the defensive back, Sheridan Jones, 20 yards downfield. It'll be a first down for Syracuse. This is one of those, it's a smart penalty by Sheridan Jones. He was beat, offer was behind him. Second double pass we've seen with Dan Villari. He had to pass interference. Number six, defense, spot foul with an automatic first down. They are aggressive and they are attacking. Credit to Jason Beck. Sheridan Jones comes up, he gets a hold there of offer. How many times you see two double passes and a half by the same team, the same guy? Allen with the seam. Takes the punishment at the 40-yard line from R.J. Mickens, but another good run. And that's a gain of 10 and a first down to the Clemson 39. Really good piece of blocking by the left tackle. Enrique Cruz shoves the defensive end all the way outside. Denhoff, big hole opens up for LaQuinton Allen. Now they empty the backfield. Inside four minutes to go. Schrader throwing it up downfield. It's caught, but out of bounds. Yamari Hatcher with Jaden Lucas, who is replacing the injured Nate Wiggins, who suffered a bone bruise last week. Wiggins did not even make the trip. One of the better corners in the country. Hatcher, a little push off. Did he get this foot in? No, he never got it down the ground. Nice job. There by Lucas, forcing the receiver out of bounds. And again, Lucas getting a lot of reps because of that injury. We'll also see a true freshman, Shelton Lewis, on the corner today. Second and 10 on the 39. Clemson looks like it's bringing pressure here. Got the backup running back, Juwan Price, in the game. Schrader again taking a shot. Same type of scenario where you've got Lucas battling Hatcher down the near sideline and another overthrow. Third and 10. Got to give your receiver a shot there. Throw the ball in bounds. No question, Dave. Puts it up, hoping for something good to happen. Really wasted down there by Garrett Schrader. I think, Dusty, too, your receiver's got to give yourself some space between where his track is and where the sideline is. Plenty of fault to go around there. So now Schrader, 6 of 12. To the air here in trouble on third down. Gets away from Tyler Davis. And now lobs it deep downfield again. Overthrows his target. He had a couple of guys down there, too. And it looked like Donovan Brown was pretty frustrated with the overthrow. Well, Sheridan Jones, he's frustrated because he got pulled. be a double move outside scramble drill. Watch Donovan Brown work. It's going to be an out route. He's working out, and there's the tug right there that he felt from Sheridan Jones. Flag doesn't get called. He was asking for it. I can understand the frustration from the redshirt freshman wide receiver. 
So they got Brady Denenberg on to try a long field goal of 57 yards here. Remember, if he misses this, Clemson's going to have the ball right near midfield. I think the Tigers thought Syracuse was punting. And it's no good. It's short. I don't like that decision from Dino Babers there. You punt it away. Now Clemson's going to have the ball in midfield with 3.25 to go. Questionable decision by Dino Babers. The kicker, Denneberg, had never even attempted a 50-yarder in his career. They try a 57-yarder. He's way short. Now Clemson gets the ball at its 39-yard line. And Klubnik throwing it downfield. Got a receiver, but it's batted away. Incomplete. Almost caught in the redirection by Tyler Brown. Elijah Clark deflected it. It'll be second down and 10. Elijah Clark so good in the back end of this defense. In perfect position. A little bit of that left arm, but nice play on the football. Great to pass breakup. Letting him play a little bit down the field here today. He might have got away with a push in the back on that one. Yeah, he had his shoulder a little bit as well. Syracuse's defense much better after trailing 14 0 nine minutes into the game. Incomplete. They were trying to set up the wide receiver screen. He just dropped the ball. So it's third down and 10 with 315 on the clock here in the first half. Jeremiah Wilson, who's got a pick six already this year, was bearing down on Stellato. And the Q's fans come to their feet. It gets loud in here in the dome, but it's been loud on third down. Communication not at a premium here. Klubnik in this offensive line. Clemson four of seven on third down. Syracuse has been able to get to Klubnik lately on third down. They rush four here and drop into coverage. Klubnik backpedaling and now taking off past the 45. Has the first down into Syracuse territory. Klubnik, a terrific athlete as we saw there. Gain of about 15. It's a smart football play. Gets outside the pocket. A lot of green grass out in front. No Syracuse defenders coming up, forcing the issue, and an excellent pickup on third and long. One timeout remaining. Again, we're outside two minutes, so clock continues to run on first downs. From the Syracuse 47. Play fake, Klubnik stepping up, taking a shot, receiver wide open. and goes up 20 to 7. Second touchdown pass of the first half for Kate Clubnick. the double move for Bo Collins. Stutter, and then he's going to go. And Jeremiah Wilson gets caught right there trying to jump the underneath route. Wide open, a lot of air under that ball from Kate Clubnick and an easy touchdown here before halftime goes back to the questionable call why not punt the ball if you're Syracuse pin Clemson deep your defense is playing well the crowds into the game instead you miss a long field goal Clemson has the short field they get a big play and now it's 21 7 credit Kate Klubnik and the offense that great run on third and long to keep the drive alive and then the on target throw deep ball to Collins take their shot down the field climbs the pocket a wide open Bo Collins perfectly delivered to put the Tigers back up two scores. I tell you, Dust, that was really impressive by Cade Klubnik right there. Standing right behind him in the pocket. He did a wonderful job of trusting the protection in front of him. He had a lot of people in his face, keeping his eyes vertical and downfield, knowing exactly where the safety was. Just a beautifully thrown football. Well, 11 touchdown passes now on the season for Cade Klubnik. Third straight game so far without throwing an interception. It's just his sixth career start, just one last year in the bowl game. But he came off the bench in the ACC championship game for DJ Uyunglele and ended up winning championship game MVP. 
Destin Hawkins is deep. It's been a good bounce back for Clemson after last week, right? You're two and two, 0 oh and two in league play. Great response on the road by the Tigers so far. The NFL London game may have cried after Toy Story 3, or perhaps uh, both of us. All of us. Uh -huh. <laughs> you didn't? Uh, he did. He just doesn't want to admit it. Right. Luke and I are both not afraid to admit that. Here's a jump ball. Laying out for it is offered, but it's incomplete. Another pass by Garrett Schrader, not really giving your receivers a great chance down the sideline. Well, let's see if Alford gets his foot in. I think he catches that football. I think you're right. Looking at the replay, let's see if they further review this one. You could see the black shredded rubber pop up in the field of play. They take another look at this. They're not going to stop it. That's not. Back to the rushing attack. Allen straight ahead past the 30. So a gain of about five out across the 30 yard line. Dragged down by Tyler Davis. Look at this one more time. Watch the foot right there. Okay. He possesses that football throughout the process of the catch. That's a miss by the official. Surprise, we didn't see that go to review. Right. At least look at it further. Right. Taking a shot. That one's caught inside the 40 by Hatcher. But out of bounds, they say again. Boy, how many balls down either sideline thrown by Garrett Schrader have been thrown off target? Just no space for these wide receivers to work. These Clemson defensive backs really forcing the issue and keeping them tight to the boundary. They've got to find a way to create a little bit of space for the quarterback to deliver the football. So Stonehouse will punt. Clemson going to get the ball back. And remember, the Tigers will get the ball to start the second half as well. They do have one timeout. Since we're inside two minutes, the clock will stop on first down. Snap was a little off the mark. Stonehouse gets it away. Another good kick. And a diving fair catch by Tyler Brown at the 16. Responded. Let's not bury the lead. You saw Colorado getting blown out sure. second straight week by USC. First down for Clemson on its 16. Shipley, and he's going to lose yardage, pushed out of bounds at about the 15-yard line. Ingram chasing him out. So second down and long here, second and 11 or so. And clock stopping on the out of bounds. That favors Syracuse, which has all of its timeouts. And if you get a stop here on second and long, they'll likely call a timeout. will throw on second down at 12 and brings to his tight end on the correct a catch at the 20 up to about the 22 so a gain of eight a third and reasonable here Bodrick speeding things up put on the gas here third and short third and medium daring a minute to go third and four Plutnik in trouble again, escaping the pocket again. And a receiver coming back to the ball. It's caught for a first down. It's Tyler Brown. It's a gain of 27. Another terrific play by Kate Plutnik, too. Just buys himself time, keeps his eyes down the field. And it's a great job by Brown, working away from the coverage of Clark, working to open space. And once again, Clay Kate Plutnik. On the scramble, on the move, locates the target down the field. Excellent first half here by the Clemson quarterback. Clock starting on the ready for play. 45 seconds to go. Klubnik over the middle. Mafa on the catch to the 45. Again, Clemson has just one timeout remaining. Let's see if the Tigers use it here. They will not. Clock to 30 seconds in counting. Not field goal range yet. Remember, you got a kicker. As we have an injured player for Syracuse, Derek McDonald. So 25 seconds to go. Good Syracuse defense secondary. Show a lot of different looks. And I think that he's really, when not much has been there, he's been able to create, extend plays, buy his receivers time. 
And really, Tom, I think he's been the difference here in this first half. His ability off schedule to make plays both with his legs and his arm has been crucial in this first half. I, I think the biggest difference, Dusty, between week one when we had Clemson versus Duke and now is there is a trust and a faith in what he's seeing, and there's no hesitation to pull the trigger. Now, he knows how to navigate the pocket, but he's been decisive when he's needed to be. He's scrambled around. He's created some second chances. That last throw right there where he was able to flip his hips and step into the throw was fantastic mechanically. And they've got the ball in Syracuse territory here on second down throw to the sideline and wisely Moffat gets out of bounds after the catch stopping the clock with 15 seconds left again their kicker Jonathan White's he just joined the team a week ago he's actually on the squad 19 through 22 a former walk-on and he was taking graduate classes online back in his hometown of Charleston South Carolina Dabo's sons who are on the team one is the holder said we need to get Jonathan White's back to help our kicking game but they're nowhere near his range just yet a lot of cushion outside for these Syracuse DBs on third and three flag down might be a free play club next pass is incomplete. Brinning still couldn't hang on. Usually sure-handed. 11 seconds to go. It may give them a first down, but again, the clock still took four seconds off there, and you're still not in field goal range. Offside. Defense. Number 94. Five-yard penalty results. First down. I mean, it's a bad move there by Kevin Jobity because Clemson might have punted at that point or gone for it. Maybe you get the ball with one Hail Mary with a few seconds left. So now you give them a first down inside the 40. They can run at least one more play. They still have that timeout because the other timeout earlier was for Syracuse's injury. Last week at the end of the game, utilizing the clock properly, an issue for this Clemson team. Let's see if they get it fixed here. Great point there. Lovnick from the pocket. Clock is moving. He dumps it off to Stellato inside the 30. Bad missed tackle by Syracuse. The clock is at three. He goes out of bounds. You're looking at about a 42 or 43 yard field goal try from here. And Clemson's going to bring on the kid, Jonathan Whites. But that missed tackle so crucial. The extra added yards make it a little bit closer for Whites. See how much that missed field goal from a week ago looming in the back of his mind. They lose B.T. Potter, who was a terrific kicker for all those years. Robert Gunn starts the year as the field goal kicker, just one of four. We already told you the white story. He comes back last week, rejoining the team, goes one for two, missing late. A kick that could have won the game. Syracuse going to use a timeout here. This will be a 42-yard try. Their first of the half, 30-second timeout. He touched on it, the clock management, some of the questionable calls by Clemson down the stretch of last week. Managed much better this week, at least in the first half here, to get Clemson in a position. We already talked about mistakes by Syracuse, offside, missed tackle. That's kind of been the story, right? The things that Syracuse was not doing right, through the four, first four games, all of that, all of it has been on display here today. Turnovers, mistakes with penalties, just uncharacteristic of this team so far this season. And Clemson's taking advantage. Look at attack on a little bit more before the half. So we've talked about to Sweeney. Dabo's son, Clay, is the holder. He was part of getting Jonathan Whites to come back. Never attempted a field goal, though, at Clemson until last week. And from 42 yards. No good. He misses again. He's one for three now. Clemson, though, will get the ball to start the second half. But big picture, you got to wonder about Dabo's confidence in the kicking situation after another miss. And pulls it ever so slightly, but another miss. These woes continue. But Clemson takes a nice... 44 offensive plays run by Clemson in that first half. 19 were in Syracuse territory including getting the ball on the three-yard line on one possession because of a bad turnover. Dave Pash, Dusty Dvorak. For his arm, he was sensational. Clemson coming into the game, I thought the issue for Syracuse would be stopping the rushing attack. They've held that in check, but Kate Klubnik has made this orange defense pick. Yeah, Will Shipley averaged under three yards per carry in that first half for Clemson. On the rollout, Klubnik going to run here. 
He did a really good job running the ball in the first half. He slides to the 28 for a gain of a few. Here's Tom. Well, Syracuse coach Dino Babers not overly pleased with anything they did during the first half. Certainly the turnovers hurt them, but they felt like they kind of regained their composure, stayed within the framework of the game. And Dabo Sweeney extremely pleased with how fast his team got off to the start, how well they've played defensively, and the plays they've made downfield in the passing game. Here's Shipley, first carry of the second half, rounded it at the 31, gain of three, knocked down by Marla Wax. The thing with Syracuse, they've been their own worst enemy. Six penalties, 67 yards, two turnovers, led to 14 points. Dino, I'm sure, told his team to relax and open for a big second half here. It'd be a great start if they could get a stop here on third down, which Clemson is owned to this point in the ballgame. Syracuse started 6-0 last year. They have not been 5-0 in consecutive seasons since 1959-60. But they'll have to come back from two scores down to have a chance at that. Third down and five. And Klubnik going downfield for Collins. It's a little bit underthrown and incomplete, but a flag. The defensive back, Isaiah Johnson, never turned around. Clemson continues to take shots down the field. We're seeing either completions pass or pass interference calls. Defense number three, 15-yard penalty, and an automatic first down. And you described it perfectly. This ball is underthrown. Bo Collins, he's got the coverage beat. He's got to slow down, come back to the ball. And Isaiah Johnson never got his head turned around. Far too much contact. Collins not able to work back to the football. And an easy, easy penalty on the opening third down of the second half. 82 penalty yards for Syracuse. Syracuse so far. We just started the second half. And Clemson again near midfield. This has kind of been the story. They have an excellent field position. Either start a drive or after one play. For a good part of this game. Clubnick with time. Another deep ball going for Tyler Brown. That's on target. Brown inside the 10. Another beautifully thrown ball by Cade Clubnick. The confidence off the charts right now for the sophomore quarterback. And it's single high safety. This is why they're taking their shots. Rocky Long told us, you got to pick your poison. You're going to stop the run, load the box, or are you going to sit back and play coverage? Single high safety, and Kate Klubnick in this passing attack is going vertically and taking advantage. Brown just under 100 receiving yards. Klubnick keeping it here, and Barron tried to get him down. He couldn't, but still Klubnick going to lose about five yards. Pushed out by Elijah Clark, who did not give up on the play. Syracuse needed that on defense. Back to the big pass. You're going to see single high safety. Barron's going to work down into the box at the snap. And as soon as Kate Klubnick sees that, he's going to take his opportunities and his chances with his talented true freshman wide receiver. Well, they have made them pay with the vertical passing game throughout this ballgame. Tell you, Dusty, the, the passing game with Tyler Brown is so different than it's been the last few weeks because he can separate from people. There are actually windows for Kate Klubnick to throw the ball into. Antonio Williams out again today due to injury. Shipley on the pitch and trouble track down in the backfield. Another negative play. This time Okachukwu. So back-to-back -back big defensive plays. That one loses about seven. Well, huge for Okachukwu. We're just going to get vertical right now. Just get up the field, create some disruption and penetration, and grab onto that jersey of the usually elusive Will Shipley. Two negative plays by this Syracuse defense to force Clemson in a third and goal from way back. And remember, they've got all kinds of issues with the kicking game. Jonathan White's missing from 42 earlier, missing last week from 29. So third and goal at the 21 of Syracuse. Klubnik with time in the pocket. Everybody covered. Klubnik stepping up, taking off. Down he goes at the 21. So now they have to rely on Whites again. It's going to be about a 38 or 39-yard try. But at some point, your kicker's got to make one of these. You're going to have to look elsewhere. Dabo told us when we spoke with him the other day, Whites is our guy. But that's going to change if he keeps missing. Robert Gunn, one for four. Jonathan Whites, one for three. Thirty-eight-yard try here for Whites. And this one's good. 
So Jonathan White's bouncing back, nailing a 38-yarder. That extends the Clemson lead to 17. Hope. Wake. Cal Wake, what about where we are right now? The Qs? De Destin Hawkins is deep, be a touchback. So I'm sure people are, are dying to know the answer because we, we didn't give them a, a ton of time, but we're going to give you the answer anyway. All right. Because I'm sure we stumped most of the audience. All right, let's answer the Aflac trivia question. you think about the history, too, of Syracuse, even back kind of when game day was just getting started, they were really good back then. Yeah, they were. Pass is caught by Donovan Brown. Out past the 30-yard line. Game of about seven. Garrett Schrader has to leave his impact and imprint on the second half. Explosive plays, big plays in the run game. Down the field, he's just missed on a couple throws, and his receivers have to help him out. But if Syracuse is going to come back and win this game, Garrett Schrader is going to have to be the factor. And those numbers you saw there, it's not going to cut it. As uh, Allen is grabbed by Rook Aroraro. So a gain of one. Syracuse going to bring in an extra offensive lineman here along with a defensive lineman. They did this in the first half and just shoved Garrett Schrader forward. Joe Cruz checking in on the O-line. And then you got Elijah Wright, a defensive lineman in the game. So a quarterback sneak in the first half in this spot. There it is. And again, you get the shove from behind. Do you like that play? I mean, obviously, we're seeing it now in the NFL no. by everybody. No, Dave. I hate that play. <laughs> I'm a former nose tackle, and it's virtually impossible to stop in those super short situations, the shove and the push from behind. But it's legal. It's within the rule book. So I would run it just like we see both in college and the NFL. Although, if, if they were doing that when you were playing, you would have been the guy in the backfield doing the shoving exactly. as well. Right? You make a decent play. <laughs> Schrader keeping it and kind of an awkward slide, but he saw the defender there, and it's only a gain of two because, again, you're down where you start the slide, second and eight. That was interesting talking to Garrett Schrader yesterday. He's a big guy, by the way, 6'4", 225 plus. But I was asking him because offensive coordinator Jason Beck said, we want him to give it. We wanted to limit how much he runs, and I asked him how he felt about that. He said, I'd rather throw it every time and have to run it. Interesting as Allen here carries defenders out near the 44. He said, I'd love to just sit back in the pocket yeah. and throw the ball. But again, his strength is when he's on the move and running the football. Meanwhile, Quinn Allen's had a nice day. But just seven points for Syracuse against this Clemson defense. And you'll give Wes Goodwin some credit. The defensive coordinator been under a little bit of heat for some of the big numbers put up by opposing teams week one and then last week against Florida State. Much better, much more sound today to get after Schrader here, but he's on the loose. Barrett Carter trying to get him, grabs him at the arm and takes him down. A sack there for Carter, first on the year. Boy, the true freshman, Peter Woods. Excellent job on the interior, as you're going to see him go to work. Good, quick hands, arm over with the big rip, and then Barrett Carter flying downhill, not allowing Garrett Schrader any room to run with the football. That's how the first and second level defense work together. The true freshman with a great rush, forcing the quarterback to move, and then Barrett Carter with the closing speed to get him to the ground. Stonehouse punting again. That was third and four, and they end up losing five yards on the sack. Takes a Syracuse bounce, and wisely, the return man, Tyler Brown, gets out of the way. And so, a rare, poor starting field position for Clemson when we come back. Midway through the third quarter, and it's Clemson ball. Worst starting field position of the day. From the 12, Klubnik back to throw from the pocket. Pass over the middle, nearly intercepted by Wax. And if you're Syracuse, you absolutely needed that. That's the kind of play that they have been getting the first few weeks, but not today. Well, it's really well read by Marlo Wax. Drops right into the throwing lane of Kate Klubnik, reading the quarterback the whole way. That's a, maybe a pick six if he is able to catch the ball. Missed opportunity by the junior leader of this defense, Marlo Latch. You've got to take advantage 
when Kate Plubnick or this Clemson offense is going to give you a free one. Ten takeaways in four games, but none today. That's the kind of play that can completely change the tenor of the game as they just run it here with Shipley out to the 15. A gain of three, third down. I want to go back to showing those beautiful buildings. What a lovely campus here at Syracuse. Great atmosphere. It's homecoming, and it's a big day for you, Mr. Patch. 20 years at ESPN ABC. Your first time to do a game back at your alma mater here in the Dome. We're all very proud of you. Very happy you're able to make it back to the place where it all started. A lot of great buildings that many Syracuse broadcasting students, including myself, never went into. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's been cool though for you to get oh, a chance to come back and so yeah. many people see you and know you and uh, it's been really awesome to be around this week with you. An honor to be a part of the tradition of the great station WAR, which has produced so many outstanding broadcasters in our industry over the last five decades. All right, third down and seven on the Clemson 15. Feels like a must-stop situation here for Syracuse to force a punt. And the ball is deflected incomplete. Leon Lowry got a piece of that ball. And so Clemson will punt it from its goal line. Boy, big stop by the Orange defense. Starting to use a spy now. Marlo Wax comes down. It's the three-man rush. Wax is there to kind of mirror Kate Klubnick throwing into coverage. Nice job by Leon Lowry getting his hand on the football. It's a big stop for the Syracuse defense. Aiden Swanson punting for the first time. Demarcus Adams deep. Good punt. Adams waiting for it, fields it on his 38 and dragged down at the 36 yard line. Shelton Lewis making a special team stop. Back to the kick. Ouch. Oh, Bob, one of the best all time, class of 74. Syracuse in a situation here where at the midway point of the third quarter got to start put points on the board and finishing drives Garrett Schrader just gets a yard or two on first down in all seriousness the the line of incredible broadcasters out of this school it's it's quite remarkable so second down and nine Schrader a little option pitch and at the 31-yard line, Barrett Carter coming downhill to make the hit. And a loss on the play of a few. This is what speed on defense looks like. Watch Barrett Carter, pers Carter pursue this football downhill. And right now, bow, behind the line of scrimmage. Such a versatile player, excellent speed. Made some key plays here in this second half. The Clemson defense. So third down and 13. And at this point, if you're Syracuse, it got to get first downs. Can't even get that here in the second half and for a good part of the first half. Schrader with time, though, steps up and has to throw. But by that time, again, the speed you talked about, it's a D lineman, Xavier Thomas, but that hesitation by Schrader allowed Thomas to catch up. And now it's fourth down, and they have to punt. He breaks the pocket. He's looking downfield. They work the scramble drill a lot with quarterback and wide receivers. He was wanting 87 Donovan Brown to work back to him, could never get open. And by the time, he looked like he was about ready to throw the football. Xavier Thomas from the backside with emphatical effort to the quarterback gets the stop and forces the punt. Stonehouse to boot it again. You should just lay that down on tape and just keep replaying it. Stonehouse to punt. And getting out of there is Brown, and it skips into the end zone for a touchback. And our Clemson back on offense. We'll see if the Tigers try to just run the ball here, take some time off the clock. First half, they weren't able to do that outside of a couple of explosive runs by Kate Klubnick. Clemson has Wake Forest next week. Back in Death Valley. And they have not lost consecutive games in a single season since 2011. It's the nation's longest active streak. Wow. And it looks like at this rate, that trend will continue. Here's Maffa with the carry. 
up to about the 22, so just a couple yards there for Phil Moffa. Long way to go. Still a quarter plus to play in this ball game, but to your point, Syracuse has got to take advantage of opportunities. We've already seen the Marla Wax missed interception on the previous possession. There's zero margin for error, both offensively or defensively. Seems like Clemson now going to milk that clock a little bit, not in as big a hurry as they've been throughout the early part of this game. Second down and eight. Klubnik to throw, four-man rush for Syracuse. Klubnik's pass is incomplete and thrown over the head of Brenningstool. Probably a good thing it was, or it might have been picked off. You had Elijah Clark, the safety, coming in. Now it's third down and eight clock stop. Elijah Clark's been all over the field here today. An excellent both and run support as well as in coverage. As we mentioned a second ago, no margin for error. Can the Q's defense get off the field? Something that was a real struggle in the first half of this game. Klubnik, sideline throw, broken up and nearly intercepted. Jaden Bellamy stepping in front of Stilato. So Syracuse's defense is off the field. They almost got another interception, though, Klubnik. Jaden Bellamy is in ideal position. Plant drive, run the route for Stilato, get in front of that, close to picking it off. But a quality pass breakup to get a much-needed stop for the Orange defense. Swanson to boot it. Demarcus Adams deep for Syracuse. Another good punt. Adams from his 30 and spun down at the 33. With a Clemson defense today, it has been nothing short of stellar. And it was really from the onset, creating some takeaways and then getting after the quarterback. A little two-man combination, Tyler Davis, T.J. Parker, early in this ball game, getting to the queue. How about the talented freshman? The handwork is impeccable there for Peter Woods and Barrett Carter flying downhill to make that play. Speed and athleticism all over the place, Tom, here for this Clemson defense. This team can just suffocate you, and when they get hot and they start really kicking it into gear, the other team's taking a lot of negative plays. Trainer in trouble, sacked again the fourth of the day for Clemson after just six all season long. Ruka Roro, a player that we've been waiting to see strike as a guy in the backfield finally does. And this is just a power rush on the inside, working on the guard. Ellis just continues to dig and grind. And Xavier Thomas coming off the edge. He forces Strader to step up and Ruka Roro to get the sack. About 170 yards of offense for Syracuse today. That's it. And they run a screen here. And out near the first down is LaQuint Allen. They're going to mark him just short of the line to gain. Jalen Phillips on the tackle. They'll be third and short. Maybe you need to start thinking about four down territory as well. Trailing by 17 late in the third. Well set up screen. I love the finish there from the Quint Allen. Physical falling forward. Here to Allen got the first down. Out to the 48. Now Quint Allen. As Syracuse going up tempo, we already talked in the first half about you know, honoring his father who was shot and killed seven months ago and changing his nameplate, adding Junior to it to honor his father is a big part of his life. But Quint gives back a lot to his community in New Jersey. We'll go back and visit with student athletes there, go to a lot of the high school games. It's the carry here bottled up only a gain of one, but you know, everybody in the athletic department talking about LaQuinn Allen and what a bright light he's been this year on the team. Now that he's eligible, there was a time where he wasn't, but was able to work something out with the school to get eligible for this season. Absolutely, Dave. And Jason Beck, the offensive coordinator, told us he brings it every snap, every day. Schrader almost intercepted, thrown right to Trotter. You have to think Schrader never saw him. Donovan Brown, I think, was the intended receiver, but he was 10 yards past Trotter. Might want to locate 54. Just going to sit down right there in the middle of the field, mirror the eyes of Garrett Schrader, and almost picks that pass off with full extension. Schrader lucky to get that one back. Nice play by one of the best linebackers in college football. Third down and eight. 
Pressure coming, Schrader in trouble, and sacked again, number five. Clemson almost has as many sacks in this game as they had in the first four combined. This is Jeremiah Trotter. So here's Wes Goodwin dialing it up and making it life difficult on the Syracuse offensive line. Got Peter Woods inside. He's going to work outside the guard. Opens up that A gap for Jeremiah Trotter to fly downhill. Boy, Garrett Schrader has been beaten and battered from the onset of this game. The pass rush has been ferocious for these Tigers. Well, Dabo Sweeney told us we're a great team. That's what he kept telling us in our conversation with us the other day. Said it's our fault we lost those first two games of the year. All right, Kevin, first down for Clemson. Klubnik throwing short pass to Mount, but caught an immediate tackle. Dusty is Texas. We're going to see next the best team you've seen this year. Best team I've seen. Now, we had Florida State. We've had this Clemson team. Duke has played really well. But to this point, yeah, Texas, they've got, they check every box you're looking for, especially at the line of scrimmage. They're built different this year for Steve Sarkeesian. And obviously, you're watching film, and you got your radio show oh, yeah. every morning, so you're watching all the teams around the country. And you mentioned this last week, that defense, at least that front, looks like an SEC front. Looks like an Alabama-Georgia type of front. They have their hands full here today with that Kansas offense, so it could be a great matchup. Now second down and 11 after the loss of one. Club Nick to the air, late third quarter. And again, just takes off. Throws. Complete. What a play by Club Nick again as that's caught by Tyler Brown. Man, he rolls left and makes some of those throws look easy 20 yards downfield. And he buys time for his receivers, and Tyler Brown continuing to work open. Man, Kate Klubnick has been so good on the move, off platform and off schedule. He's been exceptional here today, Tom. He's absolutely been exceptional. That might have been his most difficult throw of the day, of the day and he made it look easy. Tyler Brown, how about him? I mean, I know you were big on him coming out of high school, Tom, and he has stepped up in the absence of Antonio Williams, back-to-back -back weeks. Yep. The true freshman has just been very good for this offense. Playing like an upperclassman. That's the end of the third quarter here in Syracuse. We'll be back after these messages and a word from our ABC stations. For the first down as we start the fourth quarter from its 36-yard line, they're going to keep it on the ground here with Shipley. And you see that speed nine yards ahead of the 45 before Clark makes the tackle. He had a touchdown in the first half when Syracuse turned it over inside its own 25. It was an excellent jump cut and burst through the hole for Shipley. Clemson staying up tempo. Shipley gets the first down and more. Inside the 40, down to the 38-yard line. A gain of 17 for Shipley. Just counter, pull, backside guard Mitchell tackle. I love the patience to allow the blocks to set up and the burst through the hole for a second straight nice run for Will Shipley. Dusty, you talk about falling forward with these backs do, but I think the other thing that's so important about Will Shipley is his ability to protect the football in traffic. When he gets near people, two hands immediately go on the ball. He's starting to run people over now. Dennis Jockwe is shaking up. That offensive line for Clemson starting to lean on that little lighter defensive line as well. This was a recipe in the fourth quarter a year ago. A fourth quarter that... Syracuse was up 11 on the road at Clemson, and it was a 17-0 fourth quarter for the Tigers to get the win, but it was really leaning on Will Shipley, Phil Maffa, and this rushing attack. We'll see if they follow suit here in the fourth quarter today. From the 38, Clemson looking to put Syracuse away with a touchdown on this drive. Quick throw, burning still. and 42. Boy, that completely shifts the momentum. Clemson may be going in to finish off Syracuse, and now the Orange are done yet. Two yes. by Brittany Stool. Yes. Catching a fumble. The, field, the fumble recovered by the defense is under further review. They're going to look at that, and then they're also going to look to make sure that Bellamy had that foot in bounds when he touched the football. Back in a moment.
recovery is going to stand, and it's because Bellamy does an excellent job of understanding where he's at on the field. It's close, but he keeps that foot inbounds, scoops it clean, and never touches the white and goes out of bounds. Huge play for the Orange defense. First takeaway of the game for Syracuse after 10 through the first four games, but now can they capitalize? They only have eight completions all day. Damian Alford, who had nine catches last week, has been shut out so far in this game. Trying to target him, but he was covered, so Schrader takes off inside the 40, down to the 38. That's a gain of four on first down. He's 6'6", 210. He's got a size matchup against these Clemson defensive backs. Nate Wiggins not in the game yet have not been able to get their number one target the football a single time here this afternoon. How many times have we seen Schrader drop back to throw and then just take off and run? He'll throw it here on second down. Receiver open. It's off and it's caught inside the 10. Offered. Slung out of bounds inside the five. They finally find the big guy downfield for a gain of about 40 in a first down. Well, they move around. Now he's in the slot. Corner blitz comes. Nobody stays with Damian Alford. And a great find by Garrett Strader. Trying to cash in after the takeaway would be huge to start this fourth quarter for the Orange. So first and goal from the four. Again, they got that heavy package in. Maybe a broken play. Schrader throwing incomplete. Intended for Daryl Gill. But it looked like there was some sort of a breakdown there. Second down and goal. That's really well defended by Clemson. Man-to-man -man coverage outside. They wanted to go play action. Thought they'd have LaQuinn Allen in the flats, but nowhere to go with the football. And now you got an extra offensive lineman and Rashard Perry. We've seen two different defensive linemen yep. come in the game on offense. So you got 92 out there, and then an extra offensive lineman in Joe Cruz. Valari had those two crucial catches in the first half. He's in a quarterback right now. Here's Valari taking off, and Valari pounds his way towards the goal line. They're going to mark him just short, though. Justin Maskell put a lick on him. So it's third down and goal. Remember, he's a former quarterback, big body guy, 6'4", 235. He's added weight to play tight end. Take another look to see if he got it. No, he's a, well, a full yard short. They're running the same play, and there was some movement there, flagged down. The up man, Rashard Perry, moved. So, again, they go to the same play with Valari lined up as the Wildcat quarterback. That's out the window because of the five-yard penalty. And you're taking time off the clock. You're down 17 points and a lot of time wasted Offense. here. Five-yard penalty. Third down. Defensive tackle moves early. Man, costly mistake once again for Syracuse, shooting themselves in the foot. That's why defensive linemen can't have good things on offense, Dave. <laughs> Now they change personnel groupings and go back to more of an 11 personnel look. Spread this thing out. Third down and goal. You wonder, are they thinking for it on territory or do they take the points if they don't get in here? Schrader to the air. Looking, lobbing. End zone. Pulled in by LaQuint Allen. Touchdown. in the bowl game last year and a big score here man-to-man -man coverage jeremiah trotter loses a step on the quinn allen that ball perfectly placed plenty of air underneath it soft hands by the quinn allen keeps the feet in and the cues punch it in for six so they take advantage of the turnover Denneberg's extra point gets Syracuse back within 10 with 12.23 to play. By Clemson off of turnovers after 35 all of last year. Will Shipley is deep. And going to let this one sail behind him for a touchback. We'll come out to the 25. Well, let's revisit the turnover and the touchdown. Miles Farmer comes up and absolutely makes a picture-perfect tackle on Brennan Sewell. Knocks the ball loose, and Bellamy, with the awareness, stays in bounds, gives the cues the ball. And then how about the touch from Garrett Strader? LaQuint Allen, great feel for where the sideline is, and soft hands.
take that touchdown in. Now we're down to 10 point game. And what's plagued this Clemson team all season rears its ugly head here to start this fourth quarter. That was only the 10th completion for Garrett Schrader today, but a big one. Clemson going to run it and nowhere to go for Shipley. He'll lose a yard tackled by Leon Lowry at the 24 yard line. Leon Lowry, I love the tape I saw from him. Great length and a force off the edge. No running room for Will Shipley. And now the energy, the momentum. Really, you can feel it in this stadium right now. You can feel it transitioning, shifting to Syracuse. And where is Clemson's psyche after what's happened to them this year? Are they questioning themselves at all? With Syracuse back within 10, we'll see. Second and 11. Klubnik from the pocket, in trouble. Steps up. He's been the go-to guy today. Syracuse backing off, looking like it's going to rush just three. Clemson only had ten men on the field. You see Brinning still running on here late. The play clock is at five. They're going to, they're going to bring in guys here because they have to hold it. Right. Syracuse wow. can substitute Time because out. Clemson did. Clemson. And so Third that first forces first Clemson to burn a timeout. You, Dave. Kevin Bug and this is the biggest play of the game here for Syracuse. Down 10, needing a stop. Third and 12 for Clemson. Will Syracuse come after Klubnik? They've been able to get to him to today. They rush three and drop into coverage. Klubnik stepping up on the run, throwing downfield. Pulled in for a first down, and it's Tyler Brown again. How many times has Kate Klubnik on the move made great throws? And this is just Kate Klubnik making it happen. Steps up in the pocket, works to his right, and Tyler Brown working back to his quarterback down the sidelines. It's really been the theme and the story of this game. Klubnik to Brown at crucial junctures. It's a mishap by the Syracuse defense in a big, big moment. Now the clock is moving. It's a two-possession game. Clemson can take its time. See the numbers for Klubnik today. Again, First year starter, just one start a year ago. This might be his best performance. Flag down, and it was a pre snap foul. It's going to be on Clemson. That'll stop the clock here. Prior to the snap, full start. Offense number six. Five yard penalty, first down. We mentioned earlier that Kate Klubnik told us he can be a vocal leader now, but sometimes the best leadership is how you react when you face adversity. And this is a lot of adversity for Clemson to be 0 and 2 in ACC play. And this guy has been phenomenal. And to start the fourth quarter the way that they did, third and 12, that moment, that's big. And he's a vocal guy, but he's also backing it up with his actions and his play. Here, as you mentioned, a very important game. First and 15. Another throw to Tyler Brown with room. And Brown pass midfield. Scoots out of bounds after he gets the first down. Boy, Tyler Brown has been outstanding the entire game. That's his eighth catch. He's got about 150 yards on the day. With Jake Brenningstool with an excellent block on the perimeter, really spring that run by Tyler Brown. Stilato as well. Crucial block on Bellamy on the outside. Boy, Tyler Brown. How good is he with the football in his hands? Man. 12 catches on the season coming in. We talked about needing somebody to step up with Antonio Williams out for the second straight game. Brown has it a big way. Greenville, South Carolina, true freshman. Clock is at nine and a half and counting. They're in Syracuse territory. They're going to pound it with Shipley. And he's down to the 43. Marlo Wax trying to strip the ball, could not. Second down, gain of about four. And again, the clock will run inside nine minutes before the next snap. And as Tom mentioned earlier, Shipley, two hands on the football, protecting it. Marlo Wax, he came in trying to get that lawnmower, a chainsaw going, ripping away at the football. And that ball doesn't budge in the grasp of Will Shipley. Moffa comes in, this two-back set. Each of these guys do a really nice job out in front as lead blockers. 
As we referenced earlier in the first half, both catch the football out of the backfield so well. Taking that play clock down inside of five seconds before the snap. And here's Shipley, and he gets back to the line of scrimmage, and that's it. Wax is there to make the stop. Another third down and long here. Hasn't seemed to bother Clemson, though, today much, especially on this drive. Third and six. Next snap will come inside eight minutes to go in a 10-point game. Syracuse trying to stay unbeaten, 4-0. Syracuse is in Chapel Hill next week. I think if you're Rocky Long here, you got to bring pressure. Can't just let Kate Klubnick sit back there and have time to allow his receivers to come open. And with Tyler Brown. And to, your, the talk. and to your point, Dusty, they did not really come after him on that last third down. He made the play, Klubnick, to Brown. And the pass downfield with a flag down. There might be another flag, a lot of contact, and there it is. Isaiah Johnson in coverage. There was a flag at the line of scrimmage. It's going to be on Clemson, but I think there's pass interference yep. downfield on Syracuse, meaning we'll offset yep. and replay third down. They brought, looked like a delayed blitz there with yep. the corner. They brought Elijah Clark late off the edge. That's why you saw the shot taken. No safety over the top. Two fouls on the play, one by each team. Holding offense number one. Pass interference, defense, number three, the fouls offset, replay, third down. Isaiah Johnson is still barking at the official. He, he did not like the call, but looked pretty clear that it was pass interference, unless there was some contact by Bo Collins, the offensive player, as well. Had that arm up on the shoulder. He does have a point. I mean, Collins yeah. did shove him at the end. He does have a point there that maybe both guys were involved. So third down at six again. Clock at 7:48. Showing changed. pressure, and Klubnik sees it, changes things up. Play clock down to six, and a flag down. Pre-snap penalty on Clemson will be third and 11. Final snap, full start. Offense number 77. Five-yard penalty, third down. When this place is close to full and the crowd can be a factor, it's great for the home team. There, there hasn't been enough buy-in from the fans the last few years, but you see when this place is close to capacity what it can mean to the team playing here. It's definite. Eliminates communication, makes life very difficult that we, as we've seen on this possession for Clemson. Third and 11 at the 48 of Syracuse. Klubnik facing pressure, has to get rid of it incomplete. Okachuku is in the backfield. The officials haven't blown it dead yet. It's picked up by Syracuse and running it into the end zone is Stephon Thompson. The field is an incomplete pass. And now they it's make the down. call that it's an incomplete pass. But it took a while. We'll look at this to see whether it was a backward pass. Normally the officials let it play out when it's something that close, but they didn't. They blew it dead. So if it's overturned... If it's overturned, then I don't know that it will be. It's just possession, but you take away the run back. Let's see, as I'm sure replay will take some time with this one. Very close. They were trying to set up the screen. They allowed the defensive lineman to come scot-free right at Kate Klubnik immediately. That was so close. Boy, surprise. surprise. We didn't, they're not taking a look at it. Yeah. yeah. And, and they're going to punt it here. Swanson getting rid of it. And there was some contact. And here comes a flag. And it's pulled into the 15-yard line and out near the 20. But let's see. It should be running into the kicker, which would be five yards. But Clemson may put the offense back out there. Jerry Buxton, the third, collided, but did not hit the plant leg of the punter, Aiden Swanson. If he doesn't hit the plant leg, usually it's just a five-yard penalty. But again, shocked they didn't spend a little bit more time with replay looking to see if that was a backward pass. Ruling in the field was a forward pass. The fans are booing here. They are booing the acting job of the punter, Aiden Swanson, but there was contact. Mm -hmm. If you're Dabo, what do you do? Do you do you put your offense back out there for fourth down? You take a chance? Or do you just let Syracuse have the fourth ball? Fourth and six. May want to look at punting it again. Right, you have that option as well, right? It's Syracuse ball right now on around the 20. Running into the kicker. 
Receiving team number 29. Five-yard penalty. Replay. Fourth down. So at a minimum, you re-punt it, right? Because around the 20, even a touchback's going to put them in the same spot. And I think what you asked is a legitimate question. We barely hit the punter's foot that's going to get the call and yeah I think this is a smart move here by Dabo defense overalls played well put them back on the field and there's really no risk here to repunt the football barring a big return and when Clemson had the third down and 12 back in its own territory picked up a first down the clock was at around 11 minutes so they ended up burning about three and a half more minutes but we're having to punt it back to Syracuse Marcus Adams standing inside his tent. Syracuse is going to stay away from Swanson here. And the fair catch is made at the eight. So that's a 12, 13 yard difference there. Good decision by Dabo Sweeney. Syracuse ball when we come back. Craft carrier. They passed Dusty Dvorak, Tom Luganbill back here at the Dome. Syracuse with the ball down 10. A completion out near the 14-yard line to Donovan Brown. So a gain of five. But again, about a 12 or 13-yard difference because of the running into the kicker, forcing the re-kick. Syracuse otherwise would have had the ball 20. Eight penalties on Syracuse, but there have been either others that were declined or offset. So it feels a lot worse in terms of mental errors. Here's the running back, Allen, out across the 20, a first down to the 21, and a gain of eight. And Syracuse going to have to work fast. Time not on their side, but that's okay. That's how this offense always operates. They have no problem putting their foot on the gas and up in the tempo. And they empty it out here. Schrader back to throw. Fires over the middle. Trotter with a great play. Picks it off at the 32-yard line. Jeremiah Trotter, Jr., stabs. Really on the field is an interception. First down, Clemson. Well, he almost had one earlier, and he gets this one. What a huge takeaway for Jeremiah Trotter Jr. and this Clemson defense. Eyes on the quarterback. Going to drop right back into this zone. Eyes on the quarterback. Trying to work the football to Alford. Working out of that inside receiver position. Full extension and an excellent, excellent play and takeaway for Jeremiah Trotter Jr. You can't draw it up any better than that. Trotter's dad, Jeremiah Sr., fourth-time Pro Bowler. Jeremiah Jr., second-team All-America last year. They've been waiting for him and Barrett Carter, a row, row, row Davis, Xavier Thomas, to, to make more plays. Well, that front seven has been terrific in this game, and now Clemson with the ball, 6.45 remaining. Up 10. He's going to pound it. Maffa, and Maffa is gone. Syracuse got stuck to the line of scrimmage. Maffa broke through that first line of defense and then easily scampered into the end zone for a touchdown that might put Syracuse away. Well, takeaways have played this Clemson team to this point, and it's been their saving grace here today. Now, 21 points off of takeaways. They've cashed in every time their defense has gotten their offense to football. And an exclamation point there by Phil Maffa. One play after the interception, and that might empty the JMA Dome. Fans starting to head for the exits. A 32-yard touchdown run by Maffa. The point after makes it 31-14 Clemson. Well, the offensive line, simple counteraction, 77, 78. Going to get out in front. It's Mitchell Mays. It's Blake Miller. And you'll see the patience in the cutback by Phil Maffa. Blocked by Blake Miller, gets Clark out of the way. And Maffa to the house with no orange defenders anywhere in sight. Well blocked, well executed. And the Clemson Tigers going on the road. Looking like they're going to cruise to a victory here in Syracuse. And it would be Dabo Sweeney's 100th career ACC win. He would join Bobby Bowden as the only coaches. Bowden had 117 to eclipse the triple-digit mark. Dabo's been waiting. Thought it might happen week one against Duke. They lost that game. Then home against Florida State last week. Lost that one in overtime. But they are six minutes and 38 seconds away from getting that 
elusive ACC victory to start 2023. Got a lot more action on ABC coming up next. We got number three, Texas, and 24th ranked Kansas. Should be a terrific game in Austin. And then tonight, can Notre Dame bounce back? Where is the psyche of the Irish after that heart-wrenching home defeat to Ohio State, not having enough guys on the field at the end of the game on defense? They go to Duke to take on a Mike Elko coach team that's really good with outstanding quarterback. Really good defense. They run the football so well, third in college football, and touchdown runs. That rushing attack at Duke against that Irish defense is going to be a huge factor. Man, it's going to be an excellent game tonight in Durham. Garrett Schrader back to work. Going for Alford. Incomplete. Man, how many passes have we seen from Schrader toward the sideline that are thrown out of bounds? His wide receivers have to help him out. And Tom, I think Garrett Schrader also has got to move that football and work it more back into the course of play. That ball is so far outside, it's almost impossible for the receiver to stay in bounds. Yeah, we've seen that from him all day today outside of the touchdown he threw to LaQuinn Allen into traffic it's pulled in by Gill and close to the line to gain at the 34 short by half yard third down coming up gonna run it here and get the first down with Allen across the 35 Syracuse has to work quickly here six minutes to go down 17 so needing this possession and two more have a shot. Traders pass broken up. AJ Hoffler got a hand up and tipped it. You know, you, you watch this Clemson team, and clearly they're talented. They, they've yeah. got a ton of talent all over the place. You know, in the current playoff era, personal foul. It will use of hands to the face. Defense number 23, 15-yard penalty and an automatic first down. So it's on Toriano Pride. But in, in this playoff era, it means you're done. There's no, never been a two-loss team to make the college football playoff. If this was 2024, you're still alive. You got a lot to play for, right? Alive and well. And one more year until we get that expanded playoff, which I, for one, cannot wait for. Hate that four games into a season, a team like Clemson can feel like their season and national championship hopes are gone. Another batted ball. Schrader catches it out of the air and then is ripped to the ground at the 48-yard line. This is Max Mang caught the ball. Excuse me. Max Mang with the catch and then tackled after that. My bad, David. This is just a good football team that shows that if you make mistakes, if you turn the ball over, if you're penalized, you're not immune to losing. A talent can only compensate for so much, right, Dusty? That's exactly right. And it's the nature of those turnovers, as Dabo Sweeney told us earlier in the week. They've just been catastrophic, and it's such untimely junctures of the game going back to the Duke situation and obviously with what happened last week against Florida State. And obviously still in the hunt with the ACC. And we talked yep. about not much to play for here. Long way to go in conference play. A new rule this year. The top two teams in the ACC make the ACC title game. But again, no playoff with a two-loss situation. I mean, especially now that you got the Pac-12 looking like a real contender for a playoff spot. And it's Dabo to told us out. Clemson, their this second week, of the half. 2009, they started two and three out. and played in the ACC championships game. He said, we've got to do our part and play well, and we need some luck along the way. Kevin, let's check in with you. I want to remind our audience, after Syracuse Clemson, we've got Quinn Ewers, number four, Mel Kuyper's top prospects. Lost over 20 pounds in the offseason, bro. Yeah, he looks so much better. He looks also better Sands Mullet, too, Kev. I mean, just yes. nice looking, but his arm is powerful. He can make any throw on the field. I'm looking forward to watching in play. Number three, getting ready for number three, Texas, up against number 24, Kansas. Coming your way in 20 minutes. Back to you, Dave. Kind of interesting developments, too, around college football in the early games, Kev. Colorado's making a move on USC. They're back with it 14. They got the ball. We've been talking about it, Tom, that USC defense. Man, tough to trust them. Caleb Williams, that offense, so talented, so good. That defense under Alex Grinch, they've got some real holes. Third and 14. Boy, big hit by Makuba. That's going to be fourth and 12 with four and a half minutes remaining. Checkdowns are not going to get you what you need here down 17. This clock now under five minutes. Pressure coming once again in the face of Garrett Schrader. 
fourth and 12. Pressure is on Schrader immediately. Running around, looking downfield. And then hoist it toward the sideline and complete. Clemson will take over on downs. Several Tigers in the backfield led by Jeremiah Trotter. So this goes back now to the question I asked you at the top of the telecast. 6-0 for Syracuse last year. They lose to Clemson. This was see here. Garrett Schrader is going to work outside the pocket. The receiver's not working back to him, Dave. And, I, you know, we talked to offensive coordinator Jason Beck about the scramble drill and working back. Nowhere to be found there. Uh, it's likely the last opportunity for Syracuse to try to get back in this game. Right. So 6-0 last year, they lose that one. They end up winning one more game the whole year. 4-0 this year. They lose this one now 4-1. and And all the questions resurface about, is this year different from last year, any other year, under Dino Baber's save 2018 when he won 10 games? We're going to find out next week at North Carolina and then on the road at Florida State offensively to stymied here today by Clemson and they're their own worst enemy turnovers penalties shooting themselves in the foot got to clean that up this is not a good enough team to have self-inflicted wounds out of the league there Louisville another team that's undefeated in ACC play and overall and got a nice win last night Raleigh Syracuse avoids them as well meanwhile as we mentioned Clemson plays Wake Forest next still Unknowns is, is Louisville for real. They play Notre Dame next. Can Duke build on its win week one over Clemson? They got Notre Dame tonight. What about Miami? Yeah. I mean, Tyler Van Dyke has looked great with new offensive coordinator Shannon Dawson at the helm. And they utilize the transfer portal. So the ACC is a good league this year, and they've had a really good non conference. And as they start to play each other, it's going to be fun to see how this conference race shakes out. Got four or five teams with legitimate chances to play in Charlotte for an ACC championship. Ooh. Shipley just mauled by Terry Lockett. You guys bring up Miami, guys. I think Miami's pretty dang good. To play Clemson, absolutely dismantled the rushing attack, held them to 22 yards a week ago. But Jordan Travis, I think when push comes to shove, I want the football in his hands. We saw Keon Coleman in that excellent touchdown catch. He had a week ago, and I still like some of the pieces defensively. They're on a bye this week. They've got to get some things right, but to me, they're still the class of the ACC. Adams under. Been a tough spot for them to win, so that's going to be the tester for the Tigers. And Syracuse has put in its backup quarterback with this game pretty much over. They don't want Garrett Schrader to get hurt, so Carlos Del Rio Wilson has checked into the game, and they just hand it off here. Content to end this game and lose its first game of the year. Transfer from Florida, who started the game last year at Pitt when uh, Schrader was hurt. From Atlanta, redshirt sophomore. And another penalty flag. There's no foul on the play prior to the snap. Timeout. Syracuse, their second of the half, 30 seconds. That would have been penalty number 10. Instead, the timeout is called. But Kate Klubnick has really put forth a quality performance here today. We've talked about him a lot on the move. How about from the pocket? This early on, Max Pro, watch him climb up in the pocket and step into this throw. An open Bo Collins after the double move, and he delivers a perfect pass down the field. This was the start of the second half. Again, once again from the pocket, safety rotates down. Klubnick identifies it, takes the shot up the seam to Tyler Brown. So we've seen Kate Klubnick on the move, improvising, making plays with his athleticism off schedule and also from the pocket. I, I got to give him a ton of credit, continuing to work, develop. And how about Garrett Riley? He was brought in to help this offense, to help really Kate Klubnick in this passing attack. And from week one to now, they've made huge improvements in strides. Again, sir, he's just running the ball here with Jawan Price. That'll be third down. Garrett Riley, Wes Goodwin, the defensive coordinator, Davo Sweeney, the head coach, and his whole staff. We wondered what would their psyche be. You're 0-2. The expectation at Clemson every year is college football playoff. They've missed it the last two years, so even more palpable tension around there about trying to get back into the mix, and then you start 2-2, two two, but 
give these players and coaches a ton of credit against a previously unbeaten Syracuse team. Carlos Del Rio Wilson out to the 26. I mean, you think about the tone setter. Justin Maskell's hit on a big play by Garrett Schrader. He gets leveled. The ball gets popped out and recovered by Clemson to set the tone early on. Coach Winnie told us his team was mad, and they want to get back on the field, and they want to get that loss, that taste out of their mouth, and they showed that from the onset of this football game. We talk about, as you reference tone-setting plays and a bone country, bone-crushing hit from Maskell, and really to give their team the ball back, and they go down, they cash in, they score. That really did set the tone and the tenor for how this game was going to play out. There's Wes Goodwin, second year as the defensive coordinator. At Clemson, one more play here for Syracuse. Pass is caught. Out to the 31. Assuming Syracuse doesn't snap it again, that'll do it. So first loss of the year for Syracuse. Clemson gets uh, win number one in conference play and win number 100 all time of the ACC for Dabo Sweeney. Joining Bobby Bowden is the only two to eclipse triple digits and wins in the ACC in year 15 for Dabo. 31-14, the Tigers take down previously undefeated Syracuse. Well, they've got a culture at Clemson, and it showed today. How are they going to respond? With their hair on fire and looking to do a job. This season isn't over. Dabo Sweeney told us that, 